Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to my video. Ki hal chal. I hope you are doing good. In this, we are going to see problem shifting letters to. Now, it simply says that you are given a string s of lower case English letters, string s of lower case English letters, and a two D integer array called as shifts. Now, this each individual element of shift is built up of three values, which is some start index, some end index, and the corresponding direction. Start index. end index and direction start index end index both inclusive and a direction it says that for if each and every index i have to shift the corresponding characters in the string s as you can see 0 to 1 0 to 1 are the corresponding elements from some start to end values and then shift it by d when i say d what it means if the d is 0 then shift them backwards one character backwards if the d is 1 then shift them one character forward so 0 to 1 it shift backwards this will become a z this will become a a it will remain as a c okay now this is the new array or new string okay go to next query 1 to 2 1 to 2 shift it forward okay make it b make it d 0 to 2 shift it forward okay make it a make it c make it e this is the final answer now you see that for each and every query i try to go and query this specific range s to e and then shift them by one character so for every query i am going to actual range which is s to e and then that s to e can be anything in the string s so that will be q into another time complexity which obviously we will see will give us tle 5 into 1 is 4 into 5 into 1 is 4 will give you tle how to do it obviously try to think of a optimal approach in this we easily see that what is operation like what this d means if the d is 0 all the characters in this range i have to do a minus 1 to them if the character is a c do a c minus 1 which means one character backward it should become a b if it is b to a minus 1 it will become a a so this is what we have to do okay and the same way for this specific thing when the d is positive or i should say 1 then for all the letters in this range do a plus 1 okay so did you realize a very well known fact here that now the operation boils down to for a given range do a range subtraction for a given range do a range addition okay we are now involving range queries here which obviously brings us to a fact that we can use a pre known stuff which is segment tree fin bit tree or the prefix sum technique so we will use the exact same thing we will use we know that the queries are static which means there are no updates as such we can do the pre computation and then ultimately return the answer for our queries thus we can use a prefix sum technique and we don't need to use some complex data structures fin bit trees or segment trees now the problem is that for a specific range let's say this is the range 1 2 3 2, they are asking us again although in this problem we are just adding minus 2 like minus 1 and plus 1 but even if let's say there would have been any random addition or any random subtraction let's say if i ask you range 1 to 4 or 1 to 3 add a plus 2 range 1 to 3 sorry uh, range 2 to 4 add a plus 3 range 4 to 5 add a minus 2 okay i realize that individually adding would be pretty costly but i also realize that i can use a prefix sum technique here prefix sum technique simply says that i will maintain the corresponding sum and again i, I will maintain whatever sum i have or i'll maintain the corresponding array ultimately i will take the prefix sum of the final array so i know what i want i want the total impact of all these queries combined what is what is the total impact total impact can be when i will when i will be taking prefix sum it will do a plus 2 here plus 2 here plus 2 here technically this is what my aim is plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 here but i also know that ultimately i will be doing a prefix sum so i should leverage that which means i will only do a plus 2 in the very beginning because it will be carry forward automatically because prefix sum carry forwards anything which is in the prefix portion so it will carry forward automatically but at also i know that it should stop carry forwarding at this point which means i will do a opposite sign i will do a opposite sign and if it is li to ri then at the corresponding li value 
I will add a plus 2, but Ri plus 1 value, I will do a minus 2. Why minus 2? Opposite sign, because I want to stop the carry forwardness. Same way for this, if it is plus 3, do a plus 3 here. And the 1, one index plus 1, minus 3 here. Same way if it is minus 2, same sign, minus 2 should be here. Opposite sign at the index plus 1, which is plus 2 here. Now, now you know you have to apply a prefix sum technique. Now, I ask you, prefix sum technique on what? Will you apply on the input array? Uh, not really. Why? Because you require one thing, which is what will be the final impact for all these queries combined, right? So ultimately imagine that if I draw again, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it will be plus 2, plus 3, minus 2, minus 2, minus 3 and plus 2. Take the prefix sum of just your queries and find out the final impact. Find out the final impact. Thus, I will say, okay, 0, 2, 5, 5. It is 1. It is, you know, uh, minus 2. Yeah, minus 2. And then ultimately, again, whatever here it is. Okay, we can find the value, but it is not useful as such. So with this, I got that after all these shifts are done, this will be the final impact. This will be the final impact. Now, my ultimate task is that for the input, like input query, or let's say any specific array, I know that at every index, it should be shifted by plus two, shifted by plus five, shifted by plus five, shifted by plus one, shifted by minus two. Remember, shifting A, by minus 1 will bring him a z. Shifting z by minus 1 will bring him a y. And same way, minus 1 shifting by x. So this is how minus 1 shifting will work. So what I did here, if I just do a small dry run, I ultimately realized that my array length is at max 3. 0, 1, 2. And ultimately, let's say 3. 0 to 1, 0 to 1, do a minus 1. So I did a minus 1. Again, minus 1 here, then plus 1 here, okay. Then 1 to 2, a plus 1. So, plus 1 here, and then 1 to 2, this range, which means minus 1 here. Again, 0 to 2, plus 1 here, which means plus 1 here, and then 0 to 2, which means a minus 1 here. Okay, this becomes a minus 2. Now, take the prefix sum. This will become a 0, this will become a plus 1, this will become a plus 2, this will again become a 0. So, in my input array, A should be added by 0, B by plus 1, C by plus 2. C will become T E, C will become E, B will become C, A will remain as is. And that is your answer, which ultimately what you did, ultimately for all these shifts, you converted that to a single specific shift sum. That's ultimately what you did. Cool. Let's see the code. It's exactly the same as what we discussed. That firstly, I need to take the corresponding diff, which means I will firstly build up this specific array, which is the corresponding diff array. And you know that for li, it added for ri plus 1 subtracted. So I did the same thing. I will iterate on all the corresponding shift. This is my li. This is my ri. So for li do a addition which means that if the shift is forward do a plus one if it is backward do a minus one but opposite should happen for ri plus one which means for r plus one if it is forward do a minus one if it is backward do a plus one again opposite because i have to get the opposite sign now when this portion is done you know that your array is built up now you have to simply take the corresponding prefix sum for it. I will take the shift sum or you can also call it as a prefix sum for it. Uh, again, ignore that thing. So what will happen now? You will simply start by taking the corresponding prefix sum. Again, this is simply taking the prefix sum. Now prefix sum, which means taking the existing sum, adding the diff of i. This will give you again, obviously, you know that uh, that uh, what, what, what you are adding. Simply, you have the characters from A to Z, right? So, no matter how much you add, you have to bring it to a A to Z range, right? 
and if I have to transform the numbers, let's say if I am transforming it. So what if I want to convert character A, I know the shift values, let's say two. So I will firstly convert my A to a number, which means I'll do a, a character. Again, this is a character C equal to A. So I'll convert that character C to an integer. So this will become a zero. Then I will do a shift of that number zero. So I will just simply add the corresponding shift. This will become a plus two. So like the final value has become plus two. Then after the shift is done, let's say this is the corresponding shift, but you know that the shift value can become very high because you are simply adding. You, you, you can have multiple queries and you're simply adding it. So this range value can become as high as anything. So make sure to bring it down, bring it down to a range where you are just adding in a simple lowercase uh, alphabet range. So I bring it down to that range. Now my shift has become two. So in the existing number, I simply have to add a two or like ultimately this is a corresponding number, which after addition also that again uh, for modulo, it simply works the same way. Now this is the final number, which means two is the final number, but is, it, is this a number? No, obviously two plus a, which means uh, just in the sky value of a adding a two will give you a specific number converted back to a sky value. It will give you the corresponding digit, which will be C in this case, right? C as a character. This is how we can handle character to integer conversion, adding an integer and then converting back to a character. So I did the same thing. I added a diff. Again, I told you that diff can go at max, like again, not at max, but uh, if you go and check back, you have five into one E four. If you keep on adding, keep on adding, keep on adding. So five, 50,000 can actually be the case that it can go up to. So, okay, it can go to 50,000. Even if you take the modulo, corresponding modulo, then, okay, you will get some number. It can be minus 50,000 minus 50, also. So make sure that if you have done the modulo, anything which you will get will be in range of minus 25 to plus 25, right? So make sure that if it is negative, you can simply add a 26 to do a cyclic thing, right? Which means that if I ask you that you have a A and if I ask you to do a minus one, you will bring to Z, right? Now, obviously that's okay. But if I ask you that if I have to do the forward direction only, then okay, obviously do the plus do in the plus direction, do the same thing of 25, you will reach Z again. So what you did, it is actually a cyclic thing, right? A to Z and then back to A. So everything is cyclic. Thus, I can simply say, again, this is a standard phenomena in a cyclic array also. If you have one, two, three, four, five as an array, you want your index is zero, one, two, three, four, you want to go to the next index, then you do a four plus one mod five, it becomes cyclic, it comes back to index zero. This is the same phenomena here also that I did a modulo. And then if it is negative, make sure to just do, do, do a positive of 26. So as to do go into a forward direction. And again, it is the same way how I converted S of I minus to convert it to a number, adding the shift value, doing a modulo to convert it to actual, um, you know, shift in 26 range, adding it back to a character to make ultimately a final new character and ultimately getting the result. Now you might have a very, very, very quick basic question that Aryan, um, uh, like, you know, that we have this technique in uh, modulo that A minus B uh, mod M, we do a A minus B plus M mod M. So as to get rid of, so as to get rid of that negative mod values, so I, why can't I do a plus 26 uh, mod 26 here and just simply remove this line? Obviously you could have done it considering that 26 would have been the highest value out of all these values. But it is unfortunately not the case because diff can go very high as I told minus 5000. So even if you add, a, you add 126, this does not make sure, this will not make sure that your ultimately result will be a positive.
ultimately module will be ultimately result will be positive thus after doing it after doing the corresponding modulo whatever result comes up can be a negative or a positive make sure this is in this is less than 26 now you can do a plus 26 if it is negative again even if it is positive still you do a plus 26 still it will not impact just do a shift sum again here you, if you want you can remove this and do a shift sum is equals to let's say if i write it it will be a shift sum is equals to shift sum plus 26 mod 26 this will give you the exact same stuff cool again this is how you can do it now if i tell you the time and space complexity obviously we are using corresponding space thus the space will be o of n and same way for time but for q queries for shifts q and for n for the input string s this is the time itself this is the time cool bye bye take care and see you in the contest discussion bye bye